So now let's have a look at this question. So question number seven, uh, the statement says to us, the equation for the combustion of butane gas is given below. Now, butane in gaseous state reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and hydrogen as a water vapor in a form of gas. So this is a combustion reaction. Remember, it is not friendly. This kind of reaction, we have already spoke about that on the previous video. We said this kind of reaction, it is not friendly because it produces one of the greenhouse gases, which is carbon dioxide. And this carbon dioxide, this greenhouse gas, will lead to into global warming. So this reaction is actually not friendly. And then again, I said to you, there are many different ways where they can show you that this reaction it's where it's either it's either it is exothermic or endothermic now here we are given our delta h in this form the heat of the reaction it is indicated to us that delta h is less than zero so something that is less than zero it indicates that it is negative so for a fact that delta h of this reaction it is negative what does that tell us about this reaction? That means this reaction, it is most definitely an exothermic reaction. Right. Now let us try to answer the questions. 7.1, they say define the term activation energy. To define a term activation energy, we're going to say activation. Remember, it activates the reactants by doing what? By breaking off their bonds so that these reactants can combine together to form the products. So how do we define activation energy? It is the minimum energy that is required or that is needed for a reaction between these two reactants to take place. So that means activation energy, we're gonna say it is the minimum energy required for a reaction to take place to take place ne? that's how we define the activation energy now let's jump to 7.2 it says in the combustion reaction Remember, this is the combustion reaction. In the combustion reaction of butane, exothermic or endothermic, give a reason for the answer. I have already, I have already spoke about this. So is the or oh, is the is the combustion reaction of butane exothermic or endothermic? It is simple. This combustion reaction, it is most definitely exothermic reaction why do we say this is exothermic reaction we have just analyzed this before we can even answer this question it's because the energy of the reaction it is less than zero because delta h it is less than zero so when the delta h is less than zero meaning it is negative that means this reaction it is exo that's how we manage to see whether it's exo or endo. We use this. This is the resin that you give to them. Now, 7.3, it says to us, draw a sketch graph of potential energy versus cause of reaction for the reaction above for this reaction. Now, on your graph, indicate the following, the graph that we are, we are going to draw of potential energy. We're going to have to indicate activation energy. We're going to have to indicate heat of reaction. We're going to have to indicate reactants and products. And do not forget to label your y-axis and your x-axis. So our graph is going to look like this. On the y-axis, on the y-axis, no, no, not sure. I'm not going to be sure if I'm going to be able to write, okay? On the y-axis, we have 
potential energy. We have potential energy, right? And um, we have the potential energy. And what are the units? It's fine if you don't include your units, okay? Kilojoules per mole. And therefore, on the x-axis, we have, um, where is it? We have cause of reaction, okay? We have cause of reaction. Now, let us draw the graph. You're going to draw it nicely on your book, I know. So, the graph that we're going to draw is supposed to be exothermic. It's supposed to exit at the final stage. So that means you can start it maybe somewhere else over here and then go up to your activated complex, go down, go down, go down, go down. And therefore it's supposed to exit maybe somewhere else over there. It's supposed to be something that looks like this. This is it, so it exits at the bottom, right? So now let us indicate everything that they wanted us to indicate. Activation energy. Remember what they say to you, activation energy, it's between the reactants and the activated complex, right? Because the energy that you need for the reactants. So from here to there, this, we're going to call it activation, activation um, energy. This will be your activation energy, which is denoted by EA. It's your activation energy. And therefore, they wanted us to indicate the heat of reaction, which is, you see, this is heat of reaction. Heat of reaction will be delta H. So where is heat of reaction? Remember, heat of reaction is between the reactants and the products. So this is the reactants, and these are the products. So that means um, from here, let me just do this. From the reactants to the products, so... Boop, 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 boop to the products, this will be delta H, which is heat of reaction. And therefore they want us to show what? Reactants and the products. So you see these reactants, just that I don't have enough space over there. You can write butane plus uh, 13 of your oxygen. And therefore this side, you write your products. Your products, which is your um, carbon dioxide and your H2O. This will be your product over there. I hope that was clear for 7.3. Last question, 7.4. It says to us, determine the empirical formula of butane gas if it consists 82,76% carbon and 17,24% um, of hydrogen. I, I, I'm sure we are all familiar with this. So for four marks, you can't afford to lose these three marks. So to determine the empirical formula, what you're going to do is we are most definitely going to um, divide this percentage by, for sure it's percentage by mass, we're going to divide this percentage by the molecular formula, uh, by the molecular weight. So for carbon, for carbon, um, they said 82,7% of carbon. So we're going to divide that by molecular mass. So we're going to say 82,76 divide by the molecular mass. In this case, we know that carbon is 12 from the periodic table. It is 12. And then when you punch this on your calculator, you're supposed to get 6,89. Six, and therefore for hydrogen, what is the percentage for hydrogen? It is seventeen comma two four. We're gonna divide this by one. Atomic mass for hydrogen is one, so that means it's gonna be the very same thing, which is seventeen comma two four. And then we're gonna divide with the smallest number between these two values. The smallest number it's six comma eight nine six. And then we're going to divide with the very same number, 6,896. And therefore here, our quotient will yield to 1 most definitely. And therefore there, 
to two to one decimal place, you're gonna get two comma five. When you see two comma five, this is the same as uh when you see two comma five, ne? What you're gonna do is you're gonna multiply by two. So you're gonna multiply by two. You're gonna multiply by two. So when you multiply by two, there you're gonna get two. And then here, when you mul multiply by two, you're gonna get most definitely five. I can confirm two comma five multiply by two. We're gonna get five fees. Yes, we're gonna get five. Now this is for carbon. This is for hydrogen. Now let us write the empirical formula. So the empirical formula, therefore, empirical formula will be C two for carbon, H five for hydrogen, and I hope that is clear.